afternoon and welcome to lunchtime live it's lovely to be with you again it's monday the 15th of june and today marks the day that as a deanery we're praying all day using the 24 7 virtual prayer room so as a deanery we have 24 hours of prayer um, on the 15th of every month this is the first time that we've done this. It's building on our 10 days of prayer during thy kingdom come. And it's been wonderful just to spend some time reflecting on and praying for the people of Gateshead. And if you haven't signed up for a slot, I think there's one left for this month, but then we'll be doing it again next month and the month after on the 15th. So do join us. And this marks the beginning of me praying for an hour for Gateshead. So I'm going to pray for this, however long it is, 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm going to continue to pray for the hour. So this morning we are here. It's Monday. I'm with you today and tomorrow. And then Ken will be with you from Wednesday um, right through because I'm having a few days, um, a few days of holiday. So I'm taking some holiday from Thursday. Just have a bit of a break. So let's all just have a moment of quiet as we begin. And using the words that have become so familiar to us now, we come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered in God's presence, separated by distance, but united in God's love. So let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. The reading I've chosen for today is from the um, from morning prayer this week. Uh, from morning prayer today, sorry. And it's Psalm 27. And I have reflected on this before. It's one of my favourite psalms. But it just seemed appropriate again today. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he shall hide me in the shelter. In the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me and set me high upon a rock. And now shall he lift up my head above my enemies around me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy upon me and answer me. My heart tells of your word. 
seek my face. Your face will I seek, O Lord. Hide not your face from me, nor cast your servant away in displeasure. You have been my helper. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of those who lie in wait. Deliver me not, from the, not into the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen up against me, and those who breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I've already said, I love this psalm and I love the way it begins. The Lord is my light. If you think about light, when this, when the time when this psalm was written, the light was either the sun, which was so blinding, unable to be stared at, um, a bit like God, a sun, a, a light that gives a sun. That, ugh, the sun gives light, warmth, life, highlights beauty. And it becomes such a major part of society. No wonder that the pagans worshipped the sun. And John echoes the first words in Genesis. And so in Genesis, it says on day one, God said, let there be light. And John echoes, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. We love the light. You know, one of the things that we reflect on is how bright the day is, whether the sun's out shining, whether it brightens up our mood. But if we think about light as in a lamp, then light takes on a different meaning. In those days, it wouldn't have been a case of turning on a light switch as they walked into a room. It would have been a tiny little lamp. I did have mine and I've put it down somewhere. I've dug it out today that I got from Jerusalem. But a lamp with a little wick, just that light that would just illumine, just light up the place where they were, casting enough light to just see a short way ahead. If we follow God's light, then we do not know what's ahead. It's a bit like being led by one of these little lamps. We can't see into the future. It's not illuminated to us. What we can see is what's here happening now and what is just a step in front of us. And with that kind of light in mind, you have to really trust God. If you were walking in somewhere where there were no street lamps and there was no other light, but you had your little light. A bit like when you go walking on the hills and you have a, maybe a head torch. When we go camping, we always take our head torches and you can just see the way in front of you. You can't see what's behind. You can't see what's to the side. And actually, you can't see very far in front. And this change that we're in at the moment, this time when lockdown begins to um, come to an end for some, whether they want it to or not, as businesses open and shops open, it feels like we're in the dark. But we have the light of Christ just lighting our way on the path. And as long as we trust that, as long as we put our trust in God, absolutely unquestionably he will light the path revealing the way forward as we go forward as i said at the beginning today's um marks the fifth is the 15th and it's a day that we've put aside in gateshead to pray for gateshead 24 hours of prayer each month for gateshead and the prayer for me has been that as we move forward as as we as a, a whole town as a borough move forward, not just the churches, but the schools and the, the businesses, that we just take it slowly, that we take it a step 
at a time, letting Jesus light the way, relying on God to lead us on our path, taking us forward so that we know where it is that we need to go and not just going our own way and not lighting up the whole area in front of us, but just taking a step. George Lackenby, who's one of the clergy down at St Ninian's and St Andrew's Lamesley, was talking about um, the three points that the government have been saying to us in lockdown. That in lockdown, it was the message was stay home, control the virus, protect the NHS. We're now being told to do something different. And for many of us, that feels really uncomfortable. Many of us whether aren't having a choice, but we need to begin to go out. There's many people that have gone back to work today to open up shops or to um, work in schools full time or whatever it may be, as well as those people that have already been working. They've had to go out. But we're called that if we go out, then we go out with God, we don't go out on our own. We don't go out in the dark. We take the light with us. So as we travel and we go out and we take those tentative steps, I pray that the light will become brighter, that the way will become clear. And if we need to turn back for whatever reason and come back home or go back to a lockdown, then that happens and that's what we do but that everything that we do is illuminated by the light of God. The end of that psalm says, wait for the Lord, be strong and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. There are still many people that are shielding that are not going to be going out. And this psalm isn't just for those who are making those steps, it's for those who are waiting, that God's light is with you where you are. Some have seen that light burn brighter in the last couple of days where they've been able to go and join a bubble, go and see their family if they live on their own. One of my really good friends, Emily, has had a wonderful weekend with her sister and brother-in-law and three children after being on her own for 12 or 13 weeks. Wait for the Lord. God will lead us. And he will teach us the right way to go. Amen. So holding all that in mind, we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. In our time of prayer today, I'm praying for God's light to be in you, to be with you and to lead you and for you to have opportunities to share that light to praise the Lord to spread the word with those around you and praying that the three words that we hold with us are to live in the light to praise the Lord and to share the word let's pray God, our light and salvation, 
illuminate our lives that we may see your goodness in the land of the living and looking on your beauty may be changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ever present God, be with us in our isolation. Be close to us in our distancing. Be healing in our sickness. Be joy in our sadness. Be light in our darkness, be wisdom in our confusion, be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar. That now the doors reopen, we may with the zeal of Pentecost inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness to the emerging world. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the collect for today. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through our through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do nothing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you for a wonderful um, time of worship. As I said, I'm going to keep praying um, until one o'clock because it's my my hour of prayer. Um, and if anyone wants to join in with me, then please, please do that. Be lovely um, and message me or um, or just to pray. Just have some time with God and I'll see you again at lunchtime tomorrow. So our final prayer. Faithful God, may we who have shared in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love. And as you have fed us with your presence, so make us, make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.